Welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see SN1 and SN2 reactions and their stereochemistry. This video is based on an IIT JE 2023 advanced question paper. This video will also be useful for students who are taking uh, CUET, UG, PG, UGTRB, PGTRB, CSIR and other competitive examinations. So let's see the question. Match the reaction in list 1 with the features of your product in list 2. Choose the correct option. So there is a list of chemical reactions that are given on the left hand side. The reactants are given and then they are all single enantiomers. And then uh, the kind of mechanism is spelt out in the reaction arrow. And then the uh, product is given here. That is the stereochemistry of the products that are formed is given here. And then we are asked to match the list one with list two in the sense we have to find the product and then we have to tell which of these parameters will match with that of the product so first and foremost let us see the stereochemistry of sn2 reaction so it's a simple reaction wherein the nucleophile will attack from the back side and the leaving group will leave and it goes via a transition state to form the product so if this starting material is a, a chiral center then the product that is obtained will be a inverted product this is also called as Walden's inversion because the stereochemistry of the starting material and the product will be opposite to each other if the reaction has happened on the chiral center now let's see the stereochemistry of SN1 reaction so when we talk about an SN1 reaction we know we would have studied about the formation of carbocation and then the cation will form the product. But then in this particular reaction, what we must remember is even before the detachment of the leaving group, we see there is an intimate ion pair between the carbocation and the uh, leaving group that is the bromide ion that is leaving. So this intimate ion pair is a situation where the nucleophile could also attack even before the pure ions are formed. So what happens is in case of SN1 reaction, the presence of intimate ion pair leads to a situation where the nucleophile will attack the carbon from the back side like that of a SN2 mechanism. So we see two possibilities. One possibility is from the back side, another possibility is from the front side. So we all know the generalized st statement about SN1 mechanism is it will have an attack from both the front side and the back side because the carbocation is a planar molecule and there is a possibility uh, of the nucleophile to attack from either of the sides. But what is seen in case of certain SN1 reactions is the probability of formation of an intimate ion pair and this intimate ion pair leads to a preferential attack of the nucleophile from the back side over the front side. So what would happen is we will get a mixture of products that is a set of products which are inverted products, a set of products which are uh, which are having a retention in configuration in the sense the configuration of the reactant and the configuration of the products will be uh, you know a, a mixture. So this mixture will sometimes be equal that is the mixture of products that is formed is nothing but the enantiomers of that particular molecule so one will be the mirror image of the other so the inverted product and the retention product both of them if they are in equal percentage the product will be a racemic mixture and it will be optically inactive in some situations, when I said that there is more probability of backside attack over the front side attack, the inverted product will be at a higher percentage than the retention product. So what would result will be a higher percentage of the stereoisomers. That is, they, they will not be optically inactive. There could be some optical activity which could be due to the higher percentage of the inversion isomers. But what we have to remember here is the reaction of an alkyl halide to form an alcohol or any other attack by the nucleophile 
will result in mixture of enantiomers. So, if the enantiomers are of equal proposition, then you get a racemic mixture and it will be optically inactive. If they are not equal, then there could be some optical activity in case of SN1 reaction. So, the generalized statement should be remembered when we are looking at uh, individual reactions. Now, let us see the first option. So, the option P says minus 1 bromo 2 ethyl pentane and then it is clearly given single enantiomer. So, only the minus enantiomer is given. So, here the term minus is given which means it talks about the optical rotation of this particular molecule. The configuration of this molecule is not given in the sense whether it is R or S is not spelt out here. It is just given as a single uh, name. It is not given in a structural formula. So, we need not worry about whether minus is R or minus is S. We have to just remember that one of the stereoisomer of 1 bromo 2 ethyl printane is given here. So, and the reaction mechanism is clearly spelt out as SN2. So, in an SN2 reaction, we know it is a backside attack, it is a concerted mechanism, and uh, we will have the bromine being replaced by hydroxyl group. So, here in this particular reaction, uh, the pointer is showing to a carbon atom which is actually a chiral carbon. So, the, our worry now is about the stereochemistry. We know pretty well the bromine is replaced by OH and then it results in inversion and configuration when the carbon is actually optically active. But in this particular molecule, we see this carbon which is marked in yellow is the chiral carbon. So, this reaction does not lead to any change in the uh, stereochemistry or uh, groups attached to this particular chiral carbon. Rather, we see that the carbon next to the chiral carbon is only having the bromine atom and this is what is replaced by the hydroxyl group. It means this carbon which is marked in blue is having two hydrogen atoms in the sense it is achiral. So, there is no change in stereochemistry of this particular molecule. Why is there no change in stereochemistry of this particular molecule? It is because the SN2 reaction is not happening on the chiral carbon. It is actually happening on the carbon which is achiral. And so, there is only retention in configuration. In the sense, the configuration at this particular carbon is unaffected by this reaction. So, the configuration of this product molecule is retained as that of the configuration of the starting material. Now, let us see the next one. In the second case, again we are given 2 bromopentane. So, 2 bromopentane has uh, you know the OH group replaced and in this particular case you see the uh, again the chiral carbon. The reaction has happened at the chiral carbon. So, uh, the bromine is attached to the chiral carbon. And so, we know if it is an SN2 reaction, it will result in an inversion in configuration. That is why I put the structure uh, in a wedge and dash formula for us to understand how a backside attack of the OH group results in the formation of the product which is leading to inversion in configuration. So, if you assign RS configuration for the starting material and to the product, you will see they will be opposite each other. So, this is the reason why this is called as inversion and configuration. So, this particular product ha is Walder has undergone Walden inversion and so it is a inverted product. It has an inverted configuration. Now, let us see <coughs> the next molecule. So, in the next molecule we see uh, it is 3 bromo 3 methyl hexane. So, again let us see the structure. So, this particular carbon is having the bromine and uh, this carbon will be uh, the, the uh, place where the nucleophilic substitution reaction has happened. But here it is very clearly given it is SN1 reaction. So, if it is an SN1 reaction, it must have been a carbocation. So, if it is a carbocation, we know the product is not an exclusive product. We would have got both product due to retention product due to inversion. Both products are possible. 
because of this phenomenon that I explained to you earlier. So as a result, two types of products will be formed. In the sense, we get a mixture of enantiomers. So the mixture of enantiomers are due to the attack of the nucleophile from either side of the carbocation. So whether they are forming a racemic mixture or whether there is slight optical rotation is a secondary question. But the actual answer to this particular um, equation is that it gives a mixture of enantiomers. Next, let us see the final uh, molecule. In this molecule, again, we have bromine atom and bromine is substituted by OH and it follows an SN1 reaction. So, uh, in this particular molecule, if you see, because the stereochemistry was also spelt out, we see that both there are two carbon centers which are chiral. And uh, the carbon that is bearing the uh, leaving group is also having a, is, is chiral. So, because it is chiral, you know, the bromine will become OH by substitution. And so, this carbon will lead to uh, a situation where as we have studied because it's a, it is an SN1 reaction, at this place the stereochemistry would be both retention and inversion. In the sense, the, we will get a mixture of products leading to inversion and also leading to retention in configuration. So, this will give two products. But what we have to remember in this particular molecule is there is also another stereocenter here. The stereochemistry about only this carbon atom is altered, whereas the stereochemistry of the second carbon atom remains unaltered. So, because the stereochemistry of the second product is remaining unaltered, we will not get enantiomers, rather we will get diastereomeric pairs. So, one wherein the OH will be in one configuration, another the OH will be in another configuration, but then the configuration at this carbon will remain same. So, ultimately what we will get will be a mixture of diastereomers. So, this is something we must remember. So, now let us go back to the question. So, in this question we are given options like inversion in configuration, retention, mixture of enantiomers, structural isomers, mixture of diastereomers. So, let us take the first molecule. As I told you, in the first molecule, the reaction is not happening at the chiral center. It is happening at the carbon, which is achiral. So, uh, there is no change in the stereochemistry of the product. So, uh, the answer is retention in configuration. And now, next molecule, the reaction is happening exactly on the carbon that is having the leaving, uh, leaving group and it is SN2. So, it leads to inversion in configuration. That is one. And uh, thirdly, we see that um, uh, the reaction here also you see the chiral carbon, the chiral carbon is having uh, uh, the leaving group and so and the reaction is SN1. So, we will get a mixture of enantiomers because we will get the retention product and also inversion product. And finally, as I told you earlier itself, there are two chiral centers. So, the stereochemistry about only one chiral center is altered. The other chiral center does not alter the stereochemistry. As a result, we will get mixture of diastereomers. And so, the answer for this question is B. Hope you understood. Thank you.